Today I'm sharing a really clean and simple card project featuring the minimum of coloring and the results are pretty cute. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. I don't always know what to do when it comes to alcohol markers, so today I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna make one that looks kind of dumb and the next one, that's the keeper. To see my simple card project featuring a brand new stamp set that I created, stick around, it's coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using to create my card today. And I wanted to show you this new stamp set called Wild Love. And what I did was I licensed some really darling artwork to create this really fun set of cute critters and cute little greetings like Wild About You, Bear With Me, I'm Sorry, I'll Always Listen, I'm Literally All Ears, Let's spend some quality time together. Cute, right? Uh, somebody loves you. Hello, Foxy. I'm wild about you. Here's a cute one with a seal, uh, sealed with a kiss, sealed with a kiss. And again, happy belated birthday. I forgot. So bear with me would be cute for an apology or a belated birthday. It's just an all purpose set with cute little bodies to color. I love that. And there are coordinating dies if you are a person who likes to have the dies for cutting out. So that's the stamp set. And what's kind of cool today is I get to go back to the start of what got me into Copic markers. And I'm gonna show you a few that I've pulled here. And these are what I started with, which was warm grays and pinks. I have always kept my coloring very simple, but when I first started, I was afraid of coloring. I still kind of am. So I stuck with a lot of warm grays and pinks, which are going to be perfect today for this. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go from post coloring, but let's get set up for stamping and get started. I want to make the first card from this set with the elephant because I love warm grays and elephants. Well, they're usually, you know, there's usually a lot of gray involved. So I am going to stamp this little friend probably twice, just in case I mess up, which, you know, it happens when I'm coloring and trying to make choices. All right, I'm gonna press him down and I'm just gonna rub my finger over the stamp a little because I haven't stamped with this before. And this is what you see in all of my videos because oftentimes I'm starting with the sets for the very first time. I will be stamping with Memento Tuxedo Black, which is an alcohol-friendly ink, and my Copic markers today are alcohol markers. So we're gonna ink him up, and here's what you can see. Let me zoom in here a little bit. The ink will start to bead up just a little bit on a brand new stamp, and so don't worry that your stamp is defective. It's just the coating that comes uh, from the manufacturing process. So push into the corner. I'm going to bring this down, grab my little stamp press tool and transfer. Now, actually that first impression looks pretty darn good. Let's double stamp. Another reason I love this tool so much. Bring that down and again, Press. And I use this tool just because it's, it's nice to glide across the misty door and it kind of hurts my wrists if I do this motion. So that's why I use a stamp press. Flip and I'll go ahead and stamp this again and then we'll get set up for coloring. And to clean off my stamp, I'm just going to use my little stamp chamois here and just to give it a quick clean and get everything wiped off and then I'll pop it back into my little my little container that holds my chamois well now it's not really closing up for me but what's nice about this <laughs> usually I fold it let's try that again what's nice about this is it lets a little air in so your cloth doesn't get quite as smelly now we'll set up for coloring wanted to show you my little swatch guide to my markers. Now, there are other swatch vehicles out there. I have some of them. They are really great if you're an artist and know what you're doing. For me, sometimes, because I use so few colors, 
What I want to do is just know what the colors look like. Do I have all my markers swatched? No, I don't. I still have to add, I think, browns and maybe grays, which is funny because those are the ones that I started with. But what I, what I do this for is so that I can pick a basic color because I am not a blender, like meaning I don't combine colors. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just want to add a little color here and there. And so I actually pulled some of the R's, but I think I want this to be a little pinker, right? I want the inside of his ears and his cheeks to be a little pinker. So I think I'm going to go pull RV10 because that's a really nice pink. And maybe, no, I'm going to go get one. I keep my coloring so simple. So let me grab that marker and then I've got my warm grays. I want to show you another thing that I have done on my markers. So this is the brush tip side of any marker, right? But most of this style of marker, the sketch marker, they come with chisel tips. What I have done is purchased fine nibs and replace them. Why? Because I, I, the brush tips are sometimes hard for me to use in small areas. And the chisel nib for me as a person who uses markers is pointless. So I have tried to do this on a lot of my markers and replacing nibs is very easy. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen when I have to pull this out and refill it, but I will tell you this, I've had terrible success in trying to refill Copic markers. It's just not, it's just not, apparently it's not in my wheelhouse. So let me get out here. I've got W2 and this one I will use the brush and then I've got W1. Again, I'm gonna stick with the brush here because this is just going to be for the basic body. And we have W O. All right. So those are the those are the three colors. And of course I always have everything linked below, but I like to try to keep this so you can see it. All right, let's see if I can keep this in order now, because that's another problem. I've I've often put my markers on the wrong whatever. So let me take my darkest color and I'm just going to start here like kind of around his ears like that. I'm going to kind of come out there. I turn when I color too because I can't really see very well what I'm doing. But here's the thing. When you keep it really simple, it's just so nice because I'm going to put a little on his trunk. Because then, you know what, you're just adding a suggestion of color. Actually, I wish I hadn't have done that, but you know what, that looks, that's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. A little here, like that, okay? You just don't need much when you're doing something like an elephant. So now I'll go into my second darkest color, the W1, and kind of just add a layer in like that, all right? A little more there. I'm not going to touch that trunk again because I think that looks silly. Okay, we're just adding a little. And then I'm going to take my lightest color. Like that. And I really just want more over here. This is the W0. Like that. Yeah, I wish I hadn't have done that. I think that looks really silly. But you know what? It's going to be fine. Actually, let me show you a great trick. Every beginning colorer, and I still consider myself a beginner, should have the Copic Zero, the colorless blender, because if you want to sort of, well, if for all intents and purposes, erase what you just did, just go over and it's going to lift that color and sort of lighten it. I don't, I don't want to nose to look. I should have put a little underneath, but you know what? That's fine. You can also kind of use a colorless blender to blend out a little too. And you know what? I think that's going to be just fine. I don't think I'm going to add any more. All right. Let's see here. That is such a nice color, right? It's so cute and pink. So here's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to just make his little stripes pink. So his shirt just looks pink or her shirt. Now this is where I could have used my smaller nib, but you know what? We're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. A very little bit of color here. Okay. 
so simple. And actually, if you're going to do the shirt, let's just do it. I love that there are no bottoms to these little critters. So you just, you know, you just color like that. So simple. Now we're going to do little, little cheeks, little cheeks like that. And I think I'm going to do one. Well, now I don't want to be in the way of his nose. So what about, hmm, what about over just a little bit like that's under the, it would be hidden. Okay. And that's totally fine. We're going to leave that. But now I can also do just a little pink inside the ears. And then I'm going to blend this out. Just get a little pink in there. Just kind of go around like that just to kind of soften it. Which it kind of lifts the color too, but it will also soften it just so we have a little softer on the inside like that. Okay, I hate this. So here's what we're doing. <laughs> we're going to start over. I don't like this. I think it's all too dark on the ears. Uh, instead, here's what we're going to do. I didn't like the trunk, so I'm going to focus on W1. Okay, right there. I am trying to, as I like to say, cash a creative check that my body isn't ready to write. This is why I feel like I'm going to bring in the W.O. I just never know what to do with Copics and it's okay. It's okay if it's not your jam. I just wanted something really simple. You know what I mean? I don't want this to be, I'll just do a little up here like that. Maybe just a little up here. Keep it very light. Nothing on that nose. I'm not doing that again. And I actually don't like this pink. I think it's too much. And so let's see here. Do we want to do any over here? I just want to keep this so simple. Because if I want to keep this nice and easy and I overcolor, well, it's just not going to look good. So I'm actually going to grab the other markers that I originally had pulled because I feel like the R01s and the R20s are better. And let me test this out here. Yeah, that's just a warmer pink. So I think here I'm going to do stripes. Well, now that won't, will that work? Well, it might actually. I know he has no arms and that's okay. Come in here, like that. Okay, and then a stripe. And this is where I like this nib, okay. I think that has a better vibe to it. This is just, this is just not my jam. This is more of my jam. Now, I do actually have a W00 that I could blend out more with, but I think what I'm going to do is I am going to give him a nice cheery little pink cheek there. And I just don't think there's room to put it over here without it looking like it's coming right out of his, uh, his trunk. So I think that's it. I think that's literally all the coloring I'm going to do for this little friend. And now I will get the coordinated die and cut him out. Of course, the dies a lot of the dies at Simon, they are all tabbed. So I will use my little bead along, bead along, it's hard to say, snips to just break them apart, right? And once you get one going, you can just twist the rest out or you can, you can just twist them all out too. But I will just break that apart until I have this little friend cut out. I'm going to frame this out here, get my little die in place and tape that down. I like to tape top and bottom just to hold that in place. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this through my die cut machine. Ooh. see if this looks cute. There he is. And see, that is very cute. I mean, very, very simple, right? I do have a plan. <laughs> so 
<laughs> let's uh, let's proceed with the plan. Next, I want to create a little grounded area for him, and there will be a greeting too, but first I want to figure out how to do that and what color. So here's another example where swatches are very, very helpful. I created this little swatch palette of all of my positively saturated inks. And I do try to keep this out of the sunlight so it doesn't fade, which is why there's a nice little cover sheet on here. And what I'm going to do, I found, I actually flipped it right open and Cheeky is going to be a really nice match to the ink color that's on his body. So I've got Cheeky pulled and uh, I'm gonna set this aside. And what I'm going to do is take one of the masks out of this A2 layers mask set, and I actually want to get one of the smaller ones. So let's dig in. By the way, these are um, little little holders. I keep my stencils in this cute little binder from Tailored Expressions. Well, let's just pull them all out because in this set you get both the positives and the negatives. So if you wanted to blend around a shape instead of inside a shape. But what I'm going to do is I want to create a little grounding space for my greeting and my little friend here. So, so that's what I'm going to do. And what's kind of nice is on these, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but there's a little groove here and it doesn't really matter which side you're using. And all I'm going to do is just take this line it up on those groove lines, okay? And just tape. Just tape it into place so it doesn't move. Okay, like that. Then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna ink blend on this. My new mat here does have magnets to hold things in place so they don't slide around. I ordered some white ones so they wouldn't be as jarring. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the color is cheeky. And again, I'm just going to let's see here, get you stuck. My mat is so clean that it does, it kind of slides around a little. Okay, so what we're going to do is come in from the bottom and fade to the top. And it's just going to be one color. So I'll hold this down too. And we're just going to come in. Now I'm using a light hand. Okay, I'm not going really hard here. I want this to be a little darker at the bottom. Like that, and then just go light to the top. Very, very easy. Although if you're new to blending, sometimes this takes a little time, right? It takes a little time to get that light hand. I still don't have a light, light hand. I, trust me, I try, but we're going light at the top. And again, deeper at the bottom. But this color is gonna look very nice with this friend. Isn't that cute? All right. Like that. And that's probably enough. I don't think I need to do more. Plus, these tend to dry back really nicely and smooth out. So a little more in the center there. And that is our panel. Now, if you wanted to get really crafty, you could overlay another stencil design. And actually, I could do that just to show you how fun it looks. Let me see if I can find one. I'll show you with this cute little, this is called the CC Design Simple Stencil Duo. And it's just two panels, again, note card sized. But I think I'm just going to do my hearts one because I really do love this. And all you have to do, right, is pick up your up the magnets. I mean, you can tape this into place, but again, if you have heavy magnets, uh, that makes it nice. All I'm going to do here, well, you know what? I'm getting cocky. I should tape it into place just a little. All I'm going to do is take some of this cheeky ink and just go over. So we're double stenciling. And I've got to go a little darker just to get that tonal variation. And we'll just kind of go up and again, just try to keep it light going up, if you can. It's always a crapshoot. It's always a surprise at what turns out at the top, but you'll see. I'll lift it up. I think that's enough. It doesn't need to be a ton. But when we lift it up, we'll have a tone on tone pattern for our grounding. Isn't that cute? It's very subtle, but you can see that pattern in there. Let me, let me peel and reveal. There we go. <laughs> just gotta show you the results. It just adds, it just adds a little interest to the panel. All right. 
I'm going to stamp my greeting. I'll always listen. Let's reposition this and prime that a little. And I will prep my area here with my anti-static powder just to remove static and oil from the cardstock. Got my Versamark pad. I think I only want to stamp this once just because it's got that delicate little listen and that should be enough. Let's go here. It's just that it's a new stamp. But I think this will be fine. We'll let that transfer like that, all right. Let me grab my paper catch so we can add our powder. Ultra fine antique gold. When I do reds, I think that a warm gold powder is so nice, right? With reds and pinks. And let's see here. Well, there's a lot of static on my paper. Huh, I have a lot sticking. All right, let me see if I can brush that away. Got a little super zoom going here, but you can see all the little bits of powder. And sometimes I, I will admit I have a little bit of uh, lotion on my hands from before I started filming and so I will bring in a little brush this little angled shader although there's a little hair on there that needs to be clipped it's tight bristles and it makes it nice for just getting any of the extra that sticks because that just shows up when you're heating it up right then it starts to look kind of mucky and, well, not, not mucky, it's a shiny, golden, beautiful mucky, but if you want it to be a little cleaner, just have a dry brush to brush away excess. And you can kind of tap in and get little pieces off, but that's what I always do if it gets really messy. All right, let's melt the powder. Mm. That is so pretty. It's a really nice warm gray. It's not picking up the warmth as much in these studio lights, but I love that. All right, I'll grab the coordinating die. I've got that taped into place and I'll go ahead and run that through my die cut machine. Now I have to figure out how I want to crop this because I do like to trim things down. One of the reasons I love this layers die set is that it allows me to do exactly what I'm doing, which is visually frame it out before I commit. And well, I guess I could slide these out because I really do just want this to be as nicely squared, not squared, as nicely and evenly framed as possible, right? And that, that looks pretty good, but it does allow you to not have to rely on your paper trimmer skills, which if I were doing that, it would not be even at all. So I will go ahead and cut this out. I'm going to make my note card and I'm going to use one of my favorite colors that I hardly ever use. And that is the Simon Says Stamp Fog Gray, which I think would be very sweet for this. So often I use white because I love a white note card, but this is a beautiful gray and it looks really nice with my gray coloring. So this is 11 inches by four and a quarter. And all we're gonna do is score it at five and a half. So this will fold down to be a US A2 size, which is four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Give that a nice press with my bone folder. So what I'm going to do is I've already put a little bit of Alta New foam tape on the back of this little panel and I'm going to pop this right onto my note card. Let's see if I can frame that out without standing. You know what? That looks pretty good. Let's commit. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to use some foam squares for him. However, I want to have two depths. So I've pulled two different foam squares from Simon Says Stamp. One of them is a thicker and one of them is a thinner and I'll have both linked below. And let's see here, do I wanna just pick this up? I'm gonna do thinner on my elephant, right? And I'm just gonna put enough here so that, you know, he has support. 
because you know what they say support can be beautiful apparently <laughs> i am such a child of the era in which i grew up okay now spoil the rod spare spoil the adhesive uh we're fine okay you're gonna go there but then we're going to do a thicker foam square on this and I think that will fit nicely there however I am going to need to cut here to have narrower ones and we'll see if I can do this with my big meaty fingers so we have that and that that way there's a proper amount of dimension and you can see the all part is going to float just a little bit above his body. Okay. No, it took a while, right? The first coloring, which is somewhere here. Did I did I recycle it? Maybe. You know, sometimes you just you just got to go with what feels right. And this could could this use more coloring? I'm sure it could. But that is not in my wheelhouse, and so what we're going to do, let's get all our other tools is well let's place the all always listen first okay see you don't even really see those hearts now they've kind of disappeared but i just wanted to show you double stenciling right because it's so fun and i really do want to do more of it because it you know, like i said it's super fun now uh i'm going to put some liquid glue my connect glue here so that i have a little wiggle room before I have to fully commit to the greeting. I never know which way to hold. There we go, how about that? Okay, and that way I wanna center the greeting which so it breaks the plane of the little bounding box. Oh, don't slide, let's drop you in there like that. See how it's a little, a little out on either side? And that looks pretty straight. Press. I don't think I need to even worry about bringing this in, but let's just do it to confirm. Yeah, looks good. And let's take our little foam squares off here. And I will stamp something on the inside because I know a lot of people who watch my channel say, Kathy, do you, do you ever put anything on the inside of your card? And here's the thing. I am... I am a verbose card writer. I like to have room inside so that I can write my greeting, my, my handwritten message to my recipient. And so that is why you rarely see that, but I will do, I will do that here. Cause I thought about putting the, I'm literally all ears on the front of this card, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I think it's cleaner without. So I'm going to stamp that on the inside. So now all we have to do is let's see here. Hover our little friend like that. So he is also perfectly centered from side to side. And let's see, is that right there? I think that's good. And drop him down like that. So he is there. So you can see that grounding effect, right? We've got all these little rectangles happening and then you pop something onto your grounding and that creates this really fun look. Oh, I love it. And I'm not going to put any sequins on this because I feel like this is such a clean and simple card with just a little shine. Let's uh, get ready to stamp on the inside. Wanted to show you this, especially for anyone who's new to card making or is wondering about this misty stamp positioner tool. Because yes, you can take the little sub greeting, I'm literally all ears, put it on a block and stamp it. And I would probably do that, but to, because I'm getting better at what I call free range stamping, which is anything that doesn't involve this tool. But I wanted to show you this because it's very cool. Even when your card's done, okay, you can open this up pop a magnet in, place your stamp right in the center. That probably looks good. And here's the cool thing, check it out. You can pick it up with the misty door and it is not going to hurt what you have done on your card. Pick it up, okay? You can have things hanging out. Now let's see, is that straight? I think, you know what, that's, <laughs> that's straight enough. Okay, we're gonna prime and all I'm gonna do here is just take the same black ink, my memento, 
stamp or ink it up like that and bring it down. And a lot of times when I have a little greeting, I will just use my fingertips and press. And there you have a perfect inside the card greeting. And when you take your card out, nothing has happened to the front of the card. Everything is preserved and fantastic. If you didn't know that, now you do. Another reason why this is such a fantastic tool. And that is my finished card project featuring my new stamp set, Wild Love. I think these little critters are so cute. I'm so excited just to have a set in the CZ Design Collection that covers many different greeting categories and also offers some opportunities for if, if you're like me and you're not the most accomplished color person, you don't have to be with these sweet images. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. Be sure to check out the link for my blog post as well to see photos of this card project. To see a few more videos that feature simple Copic coloring, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I will see you in those videos.